So if you've been following along with the computer hardware industry as of lately, you'll know that there have been some really impressive advancements as of late, and there's some super interesting things on the horizon. So I just wanted to take today's video to talk a little bit about computer hardware, um, because I feel like it's something that us software developers need to consider a little bit more. I mean, it's something um, you know very easy for us to actually ignore the hardware for the platforms that we're developing on, um, and we don't really consider you know how performant something should be and how we can actually structure our software that best fits the specific hardware that we're developing for um, and allows us to actually take advantage of all these you know, massive advancements that we're seeing from the hardware industry. And as I get more involved with data-oriented programming, I find that this style of programming, if you will, um, lends itself very well to you know, considering the hardware because we can actually you know, think about how our data is structured and structure that in such a way that it best fits how the computer is actually going to be storing and processing our data. And if you are interested in learning a little bit more about data-oriented programming, I'm actually going to be hosting a live training session this week weekend, um, basically talking about how you can shift your mindset from thinking about things in an object-oriented way into a data-oriented way. So the training session is actually going to be called Your Object-Oriented Programming Habits are crippling your game. So it's gonna be a really fun event. Again, it's happening this weekend, so if you're watching this video the day it goes live, uh, you only have a little bit more time to do that. Um, so you can actually purchase a ticket to that event uh, using the links down in the description below. Anyways, before we get too deep into the main topic of today's video, I kinda just wanted to start out with a little bit of a story. Uh, so this was back in my college days uh, when I was learning about programming and game development in college, and one of the professors I had basically proposed a question to the class um, asking us, you know, what is the first thing that we need to consider um, when we're looking at you know different target devices that we want to actually build a you know digital prototype or an actual game for you know what's the first thing that we need to consider so basically all of us just kind of started you know guessing like random things like oh you know the first thing you need to consider is uh, you know the type of platform you're building for you know maybe if you're building for um, a desktop computer or a console or a phone um, you know you need to consider those things because you know they have like different input and stuff He's like, no, no, you need to think, you know, like a level deeper. So then we're like, oh, okay. So I guess maybe he's referring to the operating system this is running on. So is it running on uh, Windows or Mac or, you know, Android or iOS? You know, is it, you know, we need to consider the operating system it's running on. And he's like, nope, nope. You still need to consider something else even before you consider the operating system. And then we're just like, you know, what, what the heck could he even be talking about? And he's like, you guys need to consider the chipset that the game is going to be running on. And we're like, chipset, you need to consider the chipset? Okay, Boomer, I'm sure. You know, Unity handles all that for me. But the thing is, he's right. I mean, you know, that kind of just goes to show how us software developers, we like really did not even consider that, you know, what is the actual chipset that, you know, what we're, what we're running on. Um, and of course, you know, gone are the days where we actually have to like know the very specific CPU instructions. Um, even though, you know, something like that can help, it's really important for us to be, you know, very familiar with the hardware that we're developing on because this is really going to give us a way that we can kind of gauge performance for our application, you know, how performant something should be um, and, you know, what are the, you know, ins and outs of this architecture that we can really take advantage to get the, you know, most benefit out of the hardware instead of just, you know, creating something throwing it on the computer and hoping it runs well because when that happens then you know oftentimes we run into bottlenecks and then we gotta you know do the all these kinds of crazy things and workarounds to try and clean it up um, when really if we just consider the hardware and you know think about how we structured our program then we might be much better off in the long run so anyways I thought that would just be kind of a fun way to start this conversation about um, you know talking about some of the incredible advances in hardware technology you know what are some of the things that are coming on the horizon and what are some of the things that we need to consider um, as we develop games, especially with like a data oriented uh, programming mindset. And before we go any further, I do just want to give a major shout out to my go to source for when it comes to hardware news and information. And that would be Moore's Law is Dead. Moore's Law is Dead is a YouTube channel and he also hosts a podcast called Broken Silicon. He'll cover a lot of news and leaks and rumors and things like that. Basically, just anything in the realm of computer hardware. Um, and I think it's really interesting to know that stuff. So I would highly recommend going and checking out the YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead and listening 
listening to his podcast, Broken Silicon. I'll leave some links to that stuff down in the description below. So anyway, it's now to transition the video to talk a little bit about some of the current hardware advances that we've seen right now, and what are some of the things that we're going to be seeing in the near future. So we'll start off with Intel because they actually just released a new CPU architecture called Alder Lake. And this is really interesting because it's a big little architecture, meaning there's some number of big cores and some number of little cores. Now the big cores, these are basically things that are um, you know, really suited for single threaded workloads. And all these cores do not have hyper threading on them. So it's just you know one core, one thread. Um, but these bigger cores, we can basically uh, you know, turn the clock speeds up on them and they use a lot of energy. And so they handle these single threaded workloads very well. And then they also have uh, the little cores, which are known as the E cores or the efficiency cores. And basically these things are much better for multi-threading. So these cores actually do have hyper threading enabled on them. Now they're not going to be clocked as high as the uh, bigger cores, but they're going to be, um, you know, clocked a little bit lower. They run more efficiently. They don't use as much power. They can process multi-threaded workloads much better. So this is really interesting. I want to see kind of how, um, you know, Alder Lake and these big little architectures work with something like Unity's data-oriented technology stack, um, where you know basically we have you know some things running on the main thread, and then we're you know scheduling jobs off to these different worker threads. So I think this would be really, a really interesting comparison to see, um, you know, how these workloads compare to, um, you know, something like the processor that I'm running right now, which is an AMD 5950X, um, which is basically just, you know, 16 cores, 32 threads, um, basically all the same. So it'd be really interesting to see about, you know, how Unity's entity component system, you know, kind of handles things different on these different CPU architectures. Um, so anyways, speaking of AMD, we can kind of move over to, you know, what are the things that they're working on? Um, of course, you know, AMD, they're putting just a ton of cores and everything. You know, like I mentioned, I have the 16 core 32 thread CPU and that thing is fantastic. I love it, especially for, um, you know, doing these you know, very intensive multi-threaded workloads with Unity's entity component system. And of course the Threadripper platform is really just amazing, um, but you know, there's much more on the horizon. So they have some kind of big little architectures coming and they're also looking into some really interesting things such as 3D stacking, where basically there is a layer of cache literally sitting physically on top of the cores. So that, um, you know, puts the cache much closer to the cores so things can be um, you know, processed much more quickly. And so again, that's something super interesting to see how it would work with Unity's data-oriented technology stack because Unity DOS is all about, you know, optimizing for cache hits. And so the quicker we can get things out of the cache and actually into the CPU cores for processing, I think it'll be really interesting to see, you know, what kinds of performance gains we can get from that. I think there's going to be a lot. And then AMD is also doing some really exciting things in the server space. So of course they've had the Epic platform that's been out for a while. Um, and they've actually just announced a new architecture called Bergamo, which is going to uh, have up to 96 cores and over like 800 megabytes of cache. So, you know, the way that I see this is if we're making like some dots multiplayer games um, that are basically like server authority authoritative multiplayer games. So, you know, there's a lot of processing happening up in the server. I think, you know, pushing off some of these workloads to some of these, uh, you know, really incredible CPUs up in the cloud, it's really just going to lead to an excellent player experience um, for multiplayer. And then of course, I have to talk about Apple because they've been doing some really interesting things with their own custom silicon. Uh, so of course they have their, you know, Apple M1 chip, and I'm sure that we're gonna see, you know, the M2 and M3 and so on. Um, but it's really interesting because it's essentially a system on a chip. So the actual memory, like the RAM memory is basically uh, physically on the same die as the CPU. Um, and even in the new MacBook Pros, it goes up to like 64 gigabytes of RAM basically built onto the chip. I mean, there's obviously going to be a ton of efficiency gains happen there because the memory doesn't actually have to travel through a bus to get to the CPU. Um, so again, I think, you know, if, if things are, you know, optimized correctly for Apple M1, of course, we can see some really impressive gains from that. And then there's also the fact that Nvidia is going through the process of buying ARM right now. So we'll see if that actually goes through and if there's anything interesting coming from that. And then even just outside of CPUs, there's, you know, some other exciting things happening. Of course, in the GPU market, I'm not even going to go into all that stuff right now. Um, but, you know, we're basically at a new generation of RAM. So now the uh, DDR5 platforms are coming out now. And with the new M.2 solid state drives, especially like the PCIe 4.0 ones, um, they're incredibly fast. I have one in my computer and it is fantastic. But 
man, just what a time to be alive. What a time to be a creator. What a time to be a gamer. What a time to, you know, be a researcher. There's like so much computing power that is readily available to us. Um, and I mean, I'm not even talking about, you know, some of the really crazy stuff like quantum computing and all that. But I did just want to say with all this, you know, this has kind of always been a problem with uh, PC gaming in general, but I am a little bit concerned about segmentation. Um, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, with all these different types of architectures coming out, um, you know, how much is it going to matter about um, not even necessarily the, you know, pound for pound performance differences between the two. Um, but because these architectures like differ so much, like, um, you know, you have like big and little cores and then some just have a ton of just regular cores. And then, you know, Apple has things with the system on a chip. You know, how much is this actually going to affect our player's performance? Or do we just kind of, you know, again, going back to the main point of this video, do we just need to keep that in mind and you know really just kind of do our due diligence and just test on as many platforms as we can especially the ones that we're um, you know specifically targeting for so anyways with that i just kind of want to rant about computer hardware a little bit because i mean there are some really awesome incredible things coming on the horizon and i do just kind of want to bring more awareness to this especially for you know us software developers who may not um you know be talking about this and considering this as much as we maybe should be um so maybe we should have some like kind of you know PC hardware awareness month or something like that. I think that could be funny. So anyways, if you are a software developer or a game developer, I would love to hear from you. Definitely let me know down in the comment section below or come talk over on Discord. Um, let me know how much do you consider PC hardware when you're developing for something or you know, really just your target endpoint hardware? Is this something you pretty much only consider at the beginning of development or is this something you're looking at constantly throughout development or do you really just not consider it as much as you should be? You know, and if you do consider it, you know, what are kind of your processes? What are the you know key metrics and things that you're looking for? You know, how deep do you get into it? Or do you just kind of look at things on like kind of a higher level? So anyways, that's just about going to wrap up today's video. Once again, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about data-oriented programming, uh, you may still have some time if you're seeing this video early enough uh, to sign up for my live training session. Once again, it's called How Object-Oriented Programming Cripples Your Game. And it's basically talking about uh, shifting your mindset from thinking in an object-oriented mindset into a data-oriented mindset. I'm really excited for it. I have, a, I have a fun presentation for you all. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, once again, you can purchase some tickets to that using the links down in the description of this video. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about uh, Unity's data-oriented technology stack, their entity component system, and occasionally PC hardware, I guess. Um, so anyways, if you do have any questions for me or suggested for future videos, uh, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.